Once again, five fans, here we go. Three rounds in a women's catch weight at 140 pounds. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, a judo practitioner standing five feet, six inches tall. She weighed it officially 136 and one half pounds and brings a professional record that stands at one victory and one defeat. Fighting out of Eindhoven, Holland, here is Megan the Lion Van Houta. And next, her opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. She is a boxer standing five feet, seven inches tall. Official weight, 139 and one half pounds. In five professional bouts, she is perfect with five victories and no defeats. Fighting out of Helsingburg, Sweden, by way of Iran, here is the beast from the Middle East, Penny Benzakianza! Referee in charge of the action is Peter Lavery. Referee Peter Lavery about to get this one underway. Catch weight, 140 pounds here at Cage Warriors 71. Pani Kianzad in the white shorts, Megan Van Houten in the black. As I said, look for Kianzad to stick that jab out early, try and make Van Houten think about closing the distance. Kianzad strikes first with a punch to the body, a nice jab behind it. Caught there was the young Dutch woman. Yeah, to the body into the head, mixing up the target areas nicely. Oh, and there you go, just a bowling overhand right. And let's see if she jumps on an arm quickly here. Well, well stuck in half punches, yard. Punches to the body there from Van Houten. We're going to see what the defensive ground game of Pani Kianzad's like here. Getting nicely on a right hip, trying to fight for that left underhook. And you can see Van Houten immediately whizzering it. Now going back to control just above the far elbow. She lets that underhook happen though. Kianzad's going to stand back up. Van Houten taking this fight at reasonably short notice. That's going to give her some confidence early here. Exactly what she needed to do with the takedown entry. And you saw the amateur boxing back in there from Panik Kianzad. Body head and the judo throw from Van Houten. Both these ladies pulling yep. tools out of the bag. It was a really nice Uchi matter. They had to hop through it a little bit, but that's twice she's managed to, managed to put the Swede on her back early here. Funny thing with those judo throws, if you can attach yourself to the other person and throw yourself, often they have no chance but to roll with you, and that's exactly what happened there. And Hatton great at setting up that clinch and throw with the right hand, goes for a throw, that gives her back. Yeah. Always the danger with judo throws, but comes out on top. Of that little scramble, Josh. Yeah, rolled through very nicely. The turning throws are a, a bit of an interesting one in, in MMA. It really can be a, a hit or miss thing, and if you miss, you can often give your back up, as we saw there. But top control in a, in a closed guard for her now. <laughs> nice elbows from the bottom there from Panic Yanza. That's the kind of thing you've got to do from the bottom. You've got to throw those short shots. You see her trying to climb the legs up high. If she can make her think about the strikes, you see she's got the arms overhooked. So there's grips for attacks there, and immediately Van Houten wants none of it. And how to content to break away and perhaps look for another throw, I must rocking have, up points here. Yeah, I must admit that surprises me that she's willing to go out and let Kianzad re-establish that striking range. There, grip over the head again, looking for the reap between the legs. Switches to the Haragoshi, but not coming out on the best side of it this time. And now we're going to see what Pani Kianza can do from this top position, Josh. You see the foot on the hip from Van Houten, expect perhaps an armbar to come out quick. We're going to see if she's got a good attacking guard here. She hasn't closed her legs and crossed her ankles. That's often a very um, nullifying, stagnant position. There we go. Does give you time to think, though, and time to set up other things. Brad Wharton and Josh Palmer calling the action here at Cage Warriors 71. Plenty oh, of action so far. Spins out for the arm. Really nice hip work from Kianzad. Toe hold from Megan Van Houten. Kianzad's got to be careful here. Yeah, she's got to sit her weight back down on that foot. Megan Van Houten trying to crank that toe hold. There we go, she's managed to get her weight back on top of it, that's breaking the grip. It was really nice work in that scramble from 
Pani Kianzad, you could see as soon as Van Houten's hips came out for that armbar, Kianzad got her head up and she hipped in. She drove her hips forward and that allowed her, allowed her to just ride out that top position. She's ended up with this very awkward reverse mount here. Real stalemate position. Van Houten trying to perhaps pull out, still keeping a hold of that foot. Yeah, I mean, her options are limited in this position. Let's see if she triangles the body here. There are leg lock options, though. If she were to manage to wangle a knee bar from this position, that would be one of the many Cage Warriors bounties. Well, now we're in a bit of a stalemate. It's going to be interesting to see who decides to be the first one to give this up. There's only 30 seconds left in the round. Come on, girls. Let's so we may well see them. Earn. Well, I mean, that's an interesting decision from Kianza. Just body triangling. She's going to be squeezing, trying to close down the ribs and the diaphragm of Van Houten and just tire her out because she has that option in this position. The Dutch lady does not. Can affect the breathing, disturb the breathing pattern. And if this fight does go into the third round, we're trying to crank her. Oh, oh, a straight footlock, I believe that is, Josh. Difficult to see from this position. No, she's trying to actually get a, almost hey. like a knee crush on her opponent. But if that's not on the Cage Warriors bounce, then perhaps it should be. Absolutely. I don't think I've seen that before. Well, that's a, that's a, a good first round. Van Houten, she did a lot of what she wanted to do. I was really impressed with the entries. I'm sure we'll see him in the replays here. Here she comes, bowling overhand right, doesn't connect, but she threw it with enough intention to make her opponent think it was going to connect. And at that point, just bundling it to the ground. Here's the Uchi Mata, hopping all the way through. See how high she has to lift that leg to flip Kianzad over. We saw a very similar thing from one of the most legendary judo players ever to grace mixed martial arts, Hidehiko Yoshida. He'd throw those kind of sloppy, loose punches, but he'd use them as a setup to get inside. And there was the hip bump from Kianza. See, she just drove her hips forward. That killed the uh, submission attempt of Van Houten. There's an over-the-shoulder footlock. I'm going to christen that one. <laughs> Never thought I'd be saying that on mixed martial arts commentary. Referee Peter Lavery clearing the cage as we looked ready to start the second of three five-minute rounds. Women's bantamweight action. Excuse me, catchweight action. Pani Kianzad heading down to the women's bantamweight division after this fight, win or lose. Let's see if Kianzad tries to stay at range a little bit more. Very... Overhand right there from Pani Kianzad. A straight kick to the stomach. Yeah, very, still a very upright style from Van Houten. That, of course, is a part of judo as opposed to wrestling. You stand very upright and all the clinches are thrown from an upper body position. It's actually illegal now in sport judo to attack the legs in any way whatsoever. Spoil sports. Indeed. And again, looking to leverage her opponent, get one of those spectacular judo throws is Megan Van Houten. Yeah, she's trying to use that really strong right overhook she's got to leave her opponent. It's an interesting uh, skill set to deal with the judo in these clinches because you might be in a position where you think you're safe and all of a sudden a grip that you weren't aware was dangerous becomes dangerous by virtue of the fact that not many people can do these turning throws that easily. I saw Pani Kianzad doing some drills earlier this week. She was drilling a lot of elbows from this position. I think that's a good game plan. She could have probably anticipated that she'd have been in this clinch position for at least some portion of the fight. Oh, drops there, Nagy. Not tight on the grip at all, unfortunately. Almost looks as though she was going to transition to a Kataguruma. And Josh, of course, the thing with judo throws in MMA is that they, they do pose an element of risk. If you don't nail it, there's a good chance you're going to give your back up. There's an awful lot of judo throws that, that can be used very, very effectively. A lot of trips, a lot of changes of direction. It's really just the big, impressive uh, turning throws that have that really, you know, high reward but very high risk. Pani Kianza settling into the guard of her opponent now. Perhaps. Commit the arms too much, though. Van Houtsum's constantly trying to get those legs up high. There we go. Look how quickly she re-established guard. Very impressed there. Well, I asked Pani what it was like to face an opponent who perhaps didn't have the same amount of MMA experience as she did. And Pani said, look, I'm not overlooking this girl. And we're seeing exactly why here. Another armbar attempt, Again, just defended not, by Kianza. Not quite able to pull the grip through deep enough on that arm. It's just it's enough for Kianza to work the elbow out from the crook of the hip, and that just allows her to completely defend that submission. 
Nice knee to the body there. Kianza pinning the arm down and dropping some big elbows here. We've got a wonder if fatigue starting to set in the Van Hooten here. She has been very active. Referee Peter Lavery taking a look at this one, Josh. A brief respite, though. From the onslaught, Panic Kianza taking her time with this one. Big punches coming down again. And you don't want to get careless against a judo player or Van Houten's level in this position and leave your arm in, Josh. No, she's definitely got the submissions there. She goes again with the armbar, but she's, she's just not quite getting a tight enough grip. And it's a really nice attempt at the smash pass there from Kianzad. You see her get that left arm under the right leg of Van Houten and try and drive forward, turning her shoulders to pass those legs. You can do a lot of damage from this position, as we saw in our last fight, but at the same time, it still gives your opponent uh, on the bottom a lot of options to attack. Again. Opening that guard up to look for the elbow, it's Panic Yanzad stepping through into the half guard now. More elbows coming down from the young lady from Rumble Sports. Good progression to the top half guard here. Some short elbows here to help soften up her opponent a bit more, wouldn't go miss. 40 seconds left in this, the second of three five-minute rounds. Oh. Van Housen looking for the heel hook. Yeah, she's managed to get the, uh, the foot across the hip and reap the knee, but she needs to extend and just allowing herself to get smashed out of the position. That was a, that was a dangerous position for Fanny Kianza. She was wary to it, though. And those heel hooks really do come fast when they do come. Can end the fight in... Split seconds, but it's Panic Yanzad on top as the second round draws to a close. Final few seconds here, looking to land more elbows. And a final burst of aggression for Panic Yanzad. And Josh, one round apiece. I think that's definitely uh, probably the way the judges are going to go here. Really good first round for Van Houten, but that round was all Panic Yanzad. Once she blocked a few of those takedown attempts, established the top position of her own. As we'll see in the replays here. Let's she was take a look now at some of this previous action, Josh. And there was the attempt to drop Ser Nagy, but just not really done with enough pep, enough fire. And here she, she looks as though she might stand up with a fireman's carry, the Kataguruma there. But from this point, it was she, she tried some submissions. She tried to stay active. But, uh, you know, none of them were just quite deep enough to really worry Kianza. This heel hook could have been something if she'd have managed to extend her legs. You see, the fence was allowing Kianza to stand back up, put the weight on the leg, and block that submission attempt. Panic Kianza already on her feet, bouncing around. Van Houten ready to start this third and final round also. Cage Warriors 71 from the King Hussein. Youth City Boxing Arena, Brad Borton, Josh Palmer, privileged to call the action for you. And see, that's fatigue setting into Van Houten there. We saw in the first round, she threw a big right hand, bulldozed in behind it. There, it was just a case of trying to bend over and grab a clinch, and that's fatigue setting in for sure. Not quite as much snap and the chin left. Slightly too high for Van Houten there. Oh, huge throw. Hasn't quite managed to establish the scarfold, and in actuality, she's given up hooks here. And if she lets that griff around the head go, Panik Yanzard is going to puff out on Van Houten's back here. Kianza needs to be careful crossing the ankles. Uh, a judo Kezigatami, that, that scarfold position she tried to land in, doesn't utilize an underhook like the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu variant. It's just a grip around the head. And whilst that is very, very tight for a short period of time, in judo, you've only got to hold your opponent there for a short period of time. Jiu-jitsu, you can work your hips out, get on top. It's exactly what Pani Kianzad has done here. Establishing a dominant position here is Pani Kianzad. Currently based in Helsingborg, Sweden, training with Rumble Sports in Copenhagen, Denmark. Finding herself out here. She's walking a mount high now. Trying to isolate the arms. And the accuracy of Panic Yanzad is incredible on the feet or the ground. These punches aren't being wasted, Josh. They're all finding a home. Yeah, I don't think she's well. There's an interesting escape here if Van Houten can lodge that foot under the armpit. TK sweep. Of course, made famous by Japanese MMA legend Siyoshi Kasaka. 
And it's more punches rain down from Panikianza. A series of right hands there. I mean, this, you know, the fence is blocking that escape completely here. It's not really even worth going for at this stage. She's going to have to do something. I know a lot of these aren't getting through, but... Kianzad's unloading, and the referee is taking a close look at this. He's asked for an improvement, and now he's seen enough. Pani Kianzad with a third round TKO here at Cage Warriors 71. This young lady has got star quality outside of the cage. That performance proves she's got star quality inside it too. Yeah, very good performance. Troubled a little bit in the first, perhaps, but came back through the second and with flying colours. And that's exactly what you look for in a star. Someone who can not only go out there and put on a dominant performance, but someone who can come back from adversity, someone who can find themselves in trouble, regroup, rally, and go out there and win a fight. And that's exactly what we've just seen from this young lady from Rumble Sports. Let's take a look now at some of the action. And here we see Megan Van Houten trying one last judo throw, didn't quite get enough off it, gave up the hooks, which eventually allowed Kianza to slip out and take the back. And Kianza just raining down punches, nearly all of them landing, nearly all of them finding a home, incredibly accurate onslaught for the finish. And celebrating emotionally is Pani Kianza. And we throw this one to Joe Martinez in the cage to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially, 2 minutes, 17 seconds. Round number three, your winner by TKO victory, the beast from the Middle East, Pani Banzai Kianza! Pani Banzai Kianza with a big win on Cage Warriors. She's with Josh Palmer.